So to begin, uh, we know that mood disorders are common. It has the highest lifetime prevalence in any psychiatric disorders, which is 5 to 17%. Its uh, overall lifetime prevalence is 5 to 17%, and it is twice as greater in women than in men. So uh, this, uh, it was postulated that the reason for the difference between um, the gender is uh, due to the hormonal differences the effects of childbirth, the differing psychosocial stressors for women and men, and your behavioral models of learned helplessness. So the mean age of onset is usually 40 years old, but uh, almost half of them would start between 20 to 50 years old. But nowadays, there is increasing incidence in less than 20 years old. This is probably due to the increased use of your alcohol and drugs of abuse in this age. Also, it occurs more often in uh, people without uh, stable relationships or close uh, interpersonal relationships and those who are divorced or separated. Uh, wait, this, before we... Let's go back to the previous slide. Okay, so lifetime prevalence of 5 to 17%. That is according to, to Kaplan. Kaplan, po, that is... So you took everything from Kaplan. How about the WHO uh, ano, figures on, ano yan? on the top, uh, top 10 uh, illness across the world? Saan ang major depressive disorder among the top 10 list of Illnesses. Uh, Kate? Yes, Doc. Uh, I haven't read, sorry, Doc. I haven't uh, okay. checked for the WHO, uh, no. Doc. Ah, sige, mm -hmm. okay. Please check that. Uh, yes, pa, Doc. I'll ask you. Uh, ano ko is, is the fourth. It's the top four. I don't know kung nag-change na, ha? Now, we'll check so, on that, yes. uh, so do not uh, ang advice ko sa inyong tatlo if I ask questions tapos hindi nyo alam yan na lang so don't 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 attempt to search for the answer kasi it's it's a waste of time so so you check kung tama pa ba yung top top four na M MDD Tapos, uh, you mentioned that women is more at risk than men. You mentioned That's about fine. hormonal changes in women. What was the other one? Uh, psycho differing psychosocial stressors though, for men and women. Okay. okay. How about for Philippine culture? For Philippines, though. Uh -oh. You don't know or you are I, searching? I haven't learned. Ko, no, I haven't. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. Uh -oh. So uh, you, you think about the uh, how, how do Filipinos treat women in this country? Kasi iba-iba man cultures, iba-iba ang ano. Like for example, now we are, oh, of course, the yung biologic uh, vulnerability of women like giving birth uh, but other cultural factors that add stress to women like uh, and the difference ng working women as against working men is there a difference? pareho lang ba ang stress nila? or uh, ang babae ba pag nagtatrabaho hindi na expected to manage the house and do household chores ang babae ba pag magretire uh, magre from work magretire din siya sa household work and a lot of other things so yan yung, that's the difference between uh, men and women no? sa culture natin sa Philippines Kung there are also expectations, uh, Philippine culture expectations on what women should do and what men should do. And 
with the expect cultural expectations, will that add to the depressive episode of women? Yes, no. Sige. Uh, actually, marami yan siya dyan, no? if you look at the Philippine culture. Okay. Uh, when when uh, about the age of onset and increasing incidence in individuals less than 20 years, I think you should also look at the uh, generation uh, characteristics. Anong generation ba kayo? Generation. Under ba kayo sa millennial? Under ba kayo sa Gen X? Millennials? Millennials. What's the current generation now? It's Gen generation X. No. Ay, Gen ah, kayo? Gen X kayo? Uh -oh. ah, hindi ba kayo millennials? Anyway. Are millenn <laughs> Kasi different, different generations have different characters because of the difference in upbringing, difference in the environment, unlike before, sa aming time, simple pa ang buhay noon. No? Pwede kayo makalaaglaag, hindi kami masyado sa gadgets, but now, everything is fast-paced. No? So, that will impact on the emotional status of each generation. Although we cannot really say in yung ito na talaga, pag generation Diyan ang ano mo, yan ka na. There are, of course, individual differences. But in general, yun ang weakness ng generation. That's why you see more and more uh, depressed individuals less than 20 years old because of. So when you see a patient na ganito age group, you look at the circumstances of the yung yung ano yan yung aside from upbringing which you should do across all generations but also ting tingnan mo ito ba yung characteristic ng ano ng generation na ito kay what itong generation Z this is the current generation uh, later you will be handling them sa ano when you become preceptors i think si Michael Adam was recommended to be preceptor for first incoming uh, medical clerks 2021-2022 batch. So, uh, tingnan mo yung characteristic ng generation na yan so that you will be able to handle well your students. But, uh, going back to yung, ano, yung differences ng cultures, um, paano ko man ito Matagal ito na lecture, but in a gist, in a gist, uh, yung ngayon kasi, uh, parents are so engrossed in, anong tawag niyan? Earning a living and realizing their dreams. Tapos iba ang trust noon. Sa, sa amin, ang trust namin is uh, being stable. Sa ano, that's why we don't, we are loyal to our jobs. Ngayon, uh, ang trust ng parents ngayon is to have money, to be able to travel, to go abroad, yung mga ganyan ba, material things, and then what will happen to the child. No? And then after nyan, ngayon, parents are more visible in school. Diba? Nagagalit sila sa kasalanan ng teacher kung bakit bagsak ang anak nila. Before, noon, in the older generation, kasalanan ng bata kung bakit bagsak siya. No? Ngayon, it is the teacher's fault. So, nag-change. Uh, That's why, uh, ngayon, sa Facebook, uh, individuals can ano ba, manipulate it na ma-project niya ano yung gusto niya i-project. No? Kunyari, hindi ako, hindi, gusto ko ipapahit ang sarili ko, di, i, ano ko, photoshop ko. So, this generation, ito sila. No? But when it comes to facing reality, na ha, hindi pala ito tulad ng, ano, ano gano'y yung mga social media account na pwede mag, ano, hindi ito video tulad video. ng Facebook or Twitter, okay. ng mga ganyan. So, uh, 
now when they have to face reality, nahirapan sila kasi more sila sa virtual reality. That's the reason why uh, more and more in, uh, individuals, gen, uh, from starting from millennials up to Gen Z, hirap. And then uh, the interpersonal relationship, more and more individuals now in this generation opt to have online love life. Yung mga ganyan, dati hindi. Sa mga karaan, mga penpal-penpal lang, mga ganyan. Pero ngayon, boyfriend na sa online. And they fall in love without even seeing in person yung kanilang karelasyon. So, so these are the, the things that are uh, you should really think about when looking at depressed uh, individuals less than 20 years old. Huh? So, oh, oh, nice to look at. Uh, you should, of course, memorize by heart the book. But you should also add more information, yung mga current na mga ano. Okay, so. Oh, by the way, uh, divorced and separated. Uh, how about yung mga namataya ng spouse? Yes, but uh, also a stress or po siya, Dok, na makakos okay. ng depression. Oo, so uh, divorced, separated, and ano, widowed or na, na ano na. So this, hmm. do not forget to include that kasi it's very common. Yes, Dok. So thank you, Dok. So... Uh, this table just shows you the lifetime prevalence rate of your uh, depressive disorder. So, again, as I mentioned earlier, the for MDD, the lifetime prevalence is 5 to 17, but the average is 12%. For your dystymic disorder, average of 5%. For your minor depressive, 10%. And your, your recurrent brief depressive uh, disorder at 16%. So for the comorbid, so usually uh, individuals with your major mood disorders are also at an increased risk of having more uh, additional comorbid uh, disorders. So most common sa men is your substance use disorder. Example of this is your alcohol abuse or dependence. While for women, um, most common is your anxiety and eating disorders. So usually your comorbid substance use and your anxiety would worsen the prognosis of uh, the illness and also you increase uh, risk of suicide. Other common comorbids would include your panic disorder, your obsessive compulsive disorder also. Okay, uh, uh, about the substance use disorder, when you see a patient with comorbidities of substance use, whatever substance it, it is, you have to answer to yourself. It, it, did the depression come first or was the depression triggered by the substance use disorder? Like for example, in alcohol, why do you think that the alcohol's side effect is depression? When you look at the neurotransmitter system and effect of alcohol on the neurotransmitters? It would cause... Uh... Depressed activity for the brain. What is the action of alcohol on the brain? Okay, so mm -hmm. these are the <laughs> these are the questions that you you really need to answer, especially when you see uh, a patient with comorbidities. Sino ang nauna sa kanila? Is is the alcohol use or amphetamine use a self medication for depression, for the feelings of depression, mas nila makalimutan ang kanilang mga problema or mga ano, that's why umiinom or umiinom talaga sila, okay lang, tapos later on sa katagal ng inom nila nagkaroon na sila ng depression so uh, when you see these kinds of patients, yan yung dapat i-assess ninyo kasi if, if that is the case, then the primary problem is alcohol abuse tapos secondary is depression kasi siya yung ano so uh, yung trust noon is to deal with the addiction and also the primarily and then the depression because sometimes kung mawala na yung source ng nagatrigger ng, depre ng depression then okay lang 
But if it's depression first, then deal with the depression and the patient will be able to deal well in stopping the abuse. So ganyan yan siya, ha? Uh, it's the same as eating disorder among women. Na? Eating disorder among women. Uh, yung anxiety, ano ba yung nauna, anxiety or depression? Because sometimes anxiety patients, they become depressed kasi bakit man siya mag palpitate, bakit man siya maganyan, ano ba nangyayas sa kanya, and then they, they get depressed. Now, so, uh, by and large, ang sinasabi ko, you check kung may comorbidities in general, sino ang nauna. Like in OCD, magalit na siya sa sarili niya kasi hindi niya ma-stop yung kanya mga OC thoughts at saka yung impulsivity niya, yung mga uh, compulsions niya. Sorry for the term impulsivity, hindi. Uh, compulsions niya. So, na, sino, ano ba yung totoo na nauna? Okay. Sige. Thank you. Uh, you need to ask me questions kasi after this ano, topic is done, I will assume that you know na. Huh? So, Michael and uh, Mekong, you ask questions also, ha? Huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, Kate? Yes, Doc. Uh, so, thank you, Doc. So, uh, moving on, we now go to the neurotransmitters and um, that are important in our mood disorder. So, uh, the three most important uh, for MDD is your serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. So, usually, uh, during MDD, their levels are uh, decreased. Hence, you would have your lack of positive messages leading to your low spirits and lack of energy. Or, uh, two, there are also two um, associated neurotransmitters. These are your acetylcholine and also GABA. So um, I will be, so this is from a article though, uh, the relationships of neurotransmitters to the symptoms of MDD. So uh, in here, uh, it may be possible to assign your specific symptoms of your depression to your specific uh, neurochemical mechanism. So uh, the importance of this is that if we know uh, a particular uh, symptom of depression, uh, it may help us prescribe uh, treatments that target your specific, um, that targets the specific mechanisms that uh, in turn target the specific uh, depression symptoms. So um, generally increasing any of these uh, neurotransmitters, your dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin will elevate your mood, but also there are other elements of depression that may be particularly responsive to certain neurotransmitters. So uh, example, norepinephrine, this is responsible for our alertness and energy. So if the, it is decreased, so our uh, effect, I would have loss of energy and alertness. For your dopamine, this is responsible for our uh, motivation, pleasure, and reward. So if it is decreased, uh, there are also some patients who would present uh, with decreased motivation, uh, decrease in your uh, pleasure or reward. And for our serotonin, so this is uh, responsible for the obsessions and compulsions. So um, to further... Uh, can we uh, go back? Stop. Because you did not explain anxiety. It uh, can be caused by your norepinephrine and serotonin problem. So, so, so if, if, uh, if norepinephrine and serotonin causes anxiety, why do we have to give SNRI? Di maglala yes. ang anxiety? There is the... Uh, I'll try it on ah, the... Call a friend. May, may dalawa kang kaibigan dyan. May, si Michael at saka si Mekong. Actually, this chart, sige, while you are thinking, this chart will guide you on what class of antidepressants you want to, to give. SSRI, SNRI, SDA. So, you, probably the one in charge of talking about Pharmacotherapy, we'll talk more about this. But uh, ang SS nyan, if you present something, you have to know everything about the slide that you are presenting. 
Nga, so, uh, I leave it, assignment na yan sa inyo, bakit siya andyan? Nga, yung, yung tatlo. No? Ang, ang pinaka-common sa tatlo is mood. Yes, Tapos, between norepinephrine and dopamine, attention. Between norepinephrine and serotonin, anxiety. So, bakit yan siyang tatlo? Andyan. Okay, so next slide, please. So, um, from the same uh, article, po, Doc, so this is a hypothetical model showing the different actions, uh, as, which was already mentioned, Karina, po, Doc, na, um, which, um, what to give to the patient. So, uh, there are, this is a well known psychological concept that describes that depression is a mixture of little components. So, it can be an increase in your negative affect or it can be the loss of your positive affect. So for the negative affect, it means that uh, the patient views the world as hostile, unpleasant, disturbing, and threatening. While for the loss of our positive affect, it means that the patient has an inability to enjoy the rewards from normal activities such as um, spending time with your loved ones, going to work, or doing hobbies that are usually uh, pleasurable. So uh, uh, from this, uh, there were studies that suggest that the elements of these two components are found in many forms of depression. So again, uh, some patients may feel uh, depressed with an increase of your positive, uh, increase of your negative affect, while others may experience uh, depression with increase in your uh, with your uh, loss of your positive affect. So again, knowing all this, uh, it is possible to use your symptom-specific uh, pharmacologic agents to treat the patient. So um, generally for patients presenting with uh, negative affect, you can use norepinephrine or serotonin agents to ease the symptoms of your anxiety, fear, irritability, and the guilt. While for your positive affect, you can use your dopamine or norepinephrine agents to treat the loss of the motivation, interest, and your enjoyment. Um, just a clarification. Uh, I'm trying to understand the X, Y axis. Kasi may mga araw ka dyan. Uh, Ibig ba sabihin doon sa araw ng X, Y na paakyat, uh, ito yung, ano yan siya, severity of symptoms? Uh, this, uh, Ang pataas po doon. Tapos yung agents, yung may broken line, tapos may arrow, pababa. Ito yung middle doc ko yung... Yeah, uh, so how do you expect? Kung hindi ko maintindihan, is it uh, increased levels of norepinephrine serotonin agents? Zero ba yung nasa ano? Ito yung starting point, Doc. Oh, starting point is what? Normal? Normal po, Doc. Yes, po, Doc. Uh, so, with the serotonin agent, pagdating ng serotonin agent, mag-i-zero niya ang symptoms? In, um, sorry, Doc. Uh, dito po, Doc, uh, uh, this point here shows na um, there is ka ng normal, normal levels po, Doc, of the norepinephrine or serotonin agents dito banda. While, so while nagaka, sa x-axis, Doc, nagaka-decrease po yung norepinephrine or serotonin, which is, which is why we present with the depression and anxiety. Well, for here, Doc, dito, sa starting point is normal yung dopamine and norepinephrine. Then, as you go up, nagka-decrease, Doc, hence you have uh, symptoms of depression with your loss of interest and energy. Parang yan yung one yung Doc. Okay. So, to, to the person assigned for to pharmacotherapy, please, uh, I need you to go back to this, this ano, model. And then explain any actions ng dopamine and norepinephrine agents 
to the negative symptoms, negative affect or positive affect and etc. Ha? Sige. Kasi hindi ko na ipa-explain sa iyo, Kate. Ako pa rin. Yata mag- Ay, ikaw rin? Ah, <laughs> Parang ako yata ang right. pharma ko. <laughs> so, another related neurotransmitter is your dopamine. So, uh, correlating the um, dopamine system uh, is also a way to help implement your symptom-specific uh, antidepressant treatment. So, uh, in the midbrain, the dopamine has three projection areas. We have your uh, striatum here, so which comes from the production of your substantia nigra. We have your nucleus accumbens and prefrontal cortex, which comes from the projection, projections of your ventral tegmental area. So um, for your substantia nigra, so the, in the Parkinson's disease, the loss of dopamine in the striatum is, character, is a characteristic pathologic finding. So uh, according to the uh, article, this may explain why patients with uh, Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease experience your loss of energy and uh, retardation. And also the symptom of, this, of depression is partly driven due to the dysfunction of your dopamine in your striatum area. For your nucleus accumbens, so a uh, defective dopamine system in that area might also be associated with uh, dysfunction in the response of, to normal rewards and also the, the uh, devaluing of your reward uh, system uh, in depression. For your prefrontal cortex, so it had the prefrontal cortex has a role in your attention and your behavior. So uh, some say that the dysfunction in this area may cause uh, a patient to lose the mental energy, loss of drive, and fatigue that is commonly accompanied uh, by depression. Um, uh, Kate, uh, before I ask questions about this slide, will you be discussing about the dopaminergic tracks? I did not include po, Doc. Okay, so what do you remember about dopaminergic tracks? No idea. Many pathways to. Uh, no, there are. How about you, Michael, Adam? Do you remember anything about the dopamine? Because this is the this is dopamine that we are talking about. So we we need to know the basic like dopaminergic drugs. Huh? You forgot? You don't remember? How about you? Um, I, oh. um, I think there are four drops. Ah, no doubt. The main property of the main the in front of you. Ako lang ba? Na hindi ko masyado marito. Did you echo, Doc? Nag-echo ka. So how many dopamine energy drops do we have? Hello, Doc. Uh... So I think um yung mga mesocortical po doc uh, mesocortical ano the mesolimbic the to- negrostriatal and the tubular and fundibular those yeah, are the pathways pang apat mesocortical mesolimbic tubular tubular and fundibular okay and the negrostriatal negrostriatal okay so uh, if, if there, are, there is something wrong with dopamine levels in the four dopaminergic tracks, you will expect uh, behavior positive in, okay, yung, yung positive and negative symptoms as, and of course your movement problems like in Parkinsonism, yeah. that is in which track? Negrostriatal. Okay, in negrostriatal track. Okay, so that will explain the substantia nigra Kasi uh, the substantia nigra has something to do with movement. No? But uh, it, it may also affect uh, some uh, mood changes. But uh, yung prefrontal cortex, what is the physiologic function of the prefrontal cortex? 
kasi na we are talking about pathologic here in this slide but you know you need to know what is normal so ano ba function ng prefrontal cortex bakit wala ang function yan na loss of mental energy loss of drive so who wants to answer michael yes. Okay, what else? Executive functions. Oh. Sino daw? Mike, ah, Mekong, ayusin mo daw yung echo na iyon. <laughs> Para kang naga minus one. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Ay, salamat. Sige, ano? Um, executive functions po. Ah, okay, pwede na rin. Anyway, nasa frontal cortex man siya. So, uh, prefrontal... Uh, ganito, assignment ko na lang sa inyo. Uh, Di ba, sabi natin uh, saan man yung seat of emotion? Maybe. Ha? No. Okay. Limbic po, Doc, limbic. Oh, it's in the limbic system. Na. So, in the limbic system, particularly what? Amygdala siguro. Okay, amygdala. So, may mga pathways siya before the patient will will ano, will ano have behavioral manifestations like depression and ano. So, the prefrontal cortex has something to do with uh, ano ba? para siyang highway ng ano ng communication system ng brain no uh, hypothalamus thalamus yung mga ganyan and then uh, when the message about uh, ano yung gustong iparating ng amygdala goes to the prefrontal cortex uh, the prefrontal cortex now aning mangyayari Sige, i-review nyo na lang yung inyong basic neurology. <laughs> Kaya ito something to do with uh, interpretation, with, with ano ba, um, planning on what to do, yung mga ganyan. So, uh, is a, is, uh, hindi kayo mawala pagdating dito sa itong slide na ito kung alam nyo, memorize by heart yung basic basic na ano yung yung normal pathways that is why pagdating sa ano sa treatment the psychotherapy is targeted at the level of understanding of the patient ito na yung mga na intindihan niya sa sitwasyon ano ba yung ganyan ganyan and we are actually targeting the prefrontal cortex or sa frontal cortex to change the way the person sees things. So this is the biologic explanation of why we do uh, psychotherapy. Huh? Pharmacotherapy, we target the neurotransmitter systems. If you are using dopamine, then we target dopaminergic tracts. Huh? So ganyan ha. This way, uh, when you look at things you tingnan mo yung sub tingnan niyo yung kabuuan no ito yung ito yung basic ito yung ito yung pathologic ito yung normal ito yung pathologic mode of treatment ano yung target niya okay sige continue thank you doc so uh, now we go to the alterations of our hormonal regulation so um, there are lasting alterations in your, your endocrine and your behavioral response, uh, which is due to your uh, history of early trauma. So it was associated with your increase in HPA activity. So uh, what happens when you are stressed? So in the HPA axis, uh, you release your corticotrophin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus in response to uh, the perception of psychological stress by your uh, cortical brain. 
Uh, in turn, this hormone uh, induces the secretion from the pituitary corticotropin or the ACTH, which in turn then stimulates your um, adrenal cortex to release cortisol in your plasma. So overall, the general effect of your increased HPA activity is hyper uh, cortico, cortico, corticolemia, sorry. So um, what, are, um, what are the effects of your increase in your cortisol? So uh, you have your decrease in your inhibitory serotonin, increased drive from norepinephrine, acetylcholine, or your corticotropin releasing hormone, and also you have your decreased feedback inhibition from your hippocampus. So decrease. So um, there were, uh, in a study, that it was shown that um, women, uh, that physiologic response to stress is partly gender specific. So for women, uh, they show generally greater stress responsiveness in men, which is also consistent with why um, there is twice, uh, twice uh, incidence of MDD in women. So uh, moreover, uh, men also show greater cortisol responses to achievement challenges, so more on so work, so school. While for women, uh, they show greater cortisol responses to your social reduction challenges, so more on sa uh, uh, relationships, so dara sila mas, mas stress compared to the men. Uh, okay, so I, I think uh, this is general. Na? Uh, cortisol, uh, specifically what? Glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids. Yeah. Well, ano man. If we talk of adrenal, ano yun? Kasi yung cortisol is a little... If you look at the biochemistry of the HPA axis, we don't stop at cortisol lang. Kasi... Uh, Cortisol is the mother compound of blank and blank. Diba, you know that cortisol triggers the what? The fight or flight. Diba? Maalala niyo yung, yung fisho. Okay. But, uh, merong specific na ano, may specific name yung nire-release yung adrenal cortex. Uh, hindi ito daw, may mineral cortical. Sige. Um, where is, where, where is um, norepinephrine, epinephrine? Noradrenaline, adrenaline. Saan siya galing? Ang norepinephrine, ang adrenaline, ang kung ko ano? Saan siya galing? Ang, from the pituitary uh, ang adino corticotropic adrenaline at saka ano adrenaline at saka noradrenaline sige uh, i think uh, you need to brush up on your basic so iano nyo na lang kasi well yeah tama siya but uh, this will explain, hala, parang na, hello, parang na wala kayo, what did I do? Wait ha, gusto ko kasing makita masyado yung, yung inyong slide. Okay, sige, nakita, nakita ko na kayo ulit. So, yeah, so HPA axis, so meron pa yan siya after, ano, Sige na lang. Yung mga cascade, doc. Yung mga cascade, yung uh, ng adrenaline, nor adrenaline, kasi yan, dyan man yan siya. Na? And we know 
that the effect of adrenaline and noradrenaline physiologically will produce blank. So, ganyan. Pero, you have to connect that with the reason why the, the patient get depressed. No, yung, ano, yung makonek mo siya babakit. No, sige, you have this, HPA axis. So, ano? Sige, continue. You learn on that, no? Oo, uh -uh, continue. Uh -huh. So, um, again, uh, the importance of your HPA axis dysfunction is also uh, related to the efficacy of some antidepressants. So, uh, this axis is regulated through a dual system of your mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid receptors. So um, it was suggested that uh, in MDD, there, was an there is an imbalance between your MR and uh, GR receptors, so, um, which is related to uh, stress. So uh, Also, there, uh, there was a study na they found out that there is also an epigenetic regulation of your glucocorticoid receptors, which is associated with your childhood abuse. So the, the such environmental programming of your gene expression may also represent a possible uh, mechanism that links to the early life stress to the increased risk of MDD in adulthood. Uh, next, for your thyroid axis activity. So also, uh, thyroid problems, including both your hypo and hyperthyroidism, may be accompanied by your um, psych uh, psych psychiatric manifestations, ranging from mild depression and anxiety to overt psychosis. So uh, for the hypothyroidism, it commonly manifests with features of depression, while your hyperthyroidism can present with a wider spectrum, which includes depression and your anxiety. However, there are also studies say that most of, there are some patients who have uh, primary depression have also normal uh, thyroid function. But um, in here, uh, there is five to 10% um, of the patients who, are, uh, who have MDD have been previous, previously undetected thyroid dysfunction. And um, according to a study, hyperthyroid patients uh, with depression can account for at least 31 to 69%. And usually in overt hypothyroidism, one to 4% would uh, present with mood disorder and, perform, and there is increased incidence of mood disorder in your subclinical hypothyroidism, which is four to uh, 40%. So for the mechanisms for your sleep alteration, so um, sleep alterations are common in patients with MDD and this is also part of the diagnostic criteria for your uh, MDD. So usually patients with uh, depression frequently demonstrate kind of difficulty in initiating sleep uh, they also have frequent, frequent awakenings during the night and uh, earlier than desired awakenings and your non-restorative sleep. So um, usually, uh, if you are stressed, again, we have your elevated cortisol. It was found out that uh, an increase of this would also increase your intermittent awakenings and increase in your N1 and N2, which is your in the non-REM uh, sleep. For the uh, circadian rhythms, so they are also controlled by a synchronizer in your suprachiasmic nucleus. So usually, it was found out that in a study, the patients with depression have a variant of the polymorphism of your uh, clock gene. So a cl the, this clock gene is one of the genes that interact with your uh, SQN, which has an important influence on your sleep pattern. So this would cause a uh, polymorphism of this gene would cause your initial insomnia, which is um, found in some patients with uh, MDD. Uh, okay. Uh, are you done with this slide? Yes, but for this, for that. Okay. Um, 
let us spend a few, uh, just one minute on this slide because commonly uh, depressed patients have sleep problems and you have to understand why to be able to deal with it well, pharmacologically and probably yung patient education. If you, if you recall your physiology, you have non-REM and REM sleep. How many stages of non-REM? Uh, three, four, two. Okay, very good, Michael. There are four stages mm -hmm. of REM, and then you go to, uh, of non-REM, and then you go to REM sleep. So there is latency mm -hmm. period from non-REM to REM, no? Of how many minutes? So, Brana, no? Latency. Yes, <laughs> so, the latency period is about 90 minutes. 90. Okay, very good. 90 minutes. So, uh, in each stage of non REM sleep, meron yan siyang mga changes. No? And the, the, if the patient, kasi common man yan, magreklamo, dok, lagi. Diligo katulog, unya, ako ang kaayo, kanang, anong tawag niyan, pagod pa rin ako pag gising ko. It has something to do with the latency period between non-REM papuntang REM sleep. Maingon, naghagok magani ka, ingon sa mga ano, but masyadong mababaw ang sleep. It has something to do with the transition from non-REM to REM sleep. So when we talk of sleep disturbance in depressed patients, mas maraming uh, transitions kasi nag-ikli yung, ano niya, yung transition from non-REM to REM sleep. Huh? So N1, I think, is uh, non-REM stage 1. Mm -hmm. N2 is non-REM stage 2. Huh? So it has something to do with falling asleep. Tapos, doc, Yung mga dreams ko, ana, 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 it has something to do with early awakening at uh, non-REM stage 4. So, ibig sabihin, nag-interrupt talaga ang sleep niya. So, uh, go back to your normal physiology of sleep so that you can actually understand better. Gusto mo bang ipadipen ang sleep ng patient? So, what will you give? What antidepressant will you give? Para hindi ka maraming medication na binibigay. Mm -hmm. Huh? or the patient parang sige lang gusto katulog sige katulog so what antidepressant will you give or the patient complains of mababaw la ang ano yan tulog manok so what antidepressant will you give kasi if we give uh, anxiolytic we can while waiting for the effect of the, your antidepressant but uh, mas better na lang kung at the start madil mo na siya that's why in MSC of your depressed patient, you ask about the quality of sleep. No? Hindi lang nagdisig kong tulog. So you have to dissect anong klaseng tulog meron siya to be able to decide which, uh, what medications to give. So I'm not really comfortable with elevate yung cortisol kasi generic. <laughs> uh, you have to have a specific name for that cortisol. Anyway, sige na lang. So, yan siya. So, circadian rhythms has something to do with the stages of sleep. No? So, how, so, please take note, ha? Stage 1, 2, 3, 4, REM. REM, 4, 3. 3, 4, REM. Ganyan yan siya, cycle throughout the night. No? Tapos, pag magising na, REM, stage 4, 3, 2, 1, gising na siya. So, kung nagigising siya, may disruption sa cycle ng sleep cycle. So, hanapin na lang kung bakit. Okay. Uh, please read more on that kasi gist lang yung nasabi ko. Okay. Okay, Doc. We we'll read on that, Doc. So, um, uh, in addition po, um, Patients with depression usually have your premature loss of your deep or slow wave sleep and increase in your nocturnal arousal. So uh, the effect of this in the patient is, again, which was mentioned earlier, increase in your nocturnal awakenings, increase uh, 
facing REM sleep, reduce in total sleep time, and also increase in your core body temperature. So um, the combination of your increased uh, REM drive and the decrease in your slow-wave deep sleep results in your significant reduction in the first period of your non-REM sleep, which is what we called your, I uh, just mentioned earlier, your reduced uh, REM latency, which uh, this, redu re this reduced REM latency and deficits in your slow-wave sleep usually persist even after the recovery of uh, depressive episode. So uh, the increased REM density also, uh, which uh, it means now there is increase in the eye movements per minute, during your REM sleep is, uh, this is responsible for the nightmares and your vivid dreams, which are usually experienced by some depressed patients. Uh, please take note also that there are antidepressants who has that side effect. Huh? So when you hear a patient complain about vivid dreams, check side effect ba ito na antidepressant na binibigay nyo or anxiolytic na binibigay nyo or yan talaga ang sleep pattern niya before taking the medications. Sige, continue, Kate. Thank you, Doc. So, uh, let, now let's go to the genetic factors. So, uh, family twin and adoption studies provide your solid and consistent evidence that indeed MDD is a familial disorder. And uh, this familiality is mostly or entirely due to your genetic factor. So uh, in one study, it was uh, they said that uh, susceptibility to NDD is influenced by your genetic and non-genetic factors. For the genetic factors, it could account for almost 30 to 40%, while the rest is due to your non-genetic factor. So uh, go, moving to the genetic factors, um, generally, uh, the more members of the family who are affected, the greater the risk is to the child. So an example here is, if you have one parent with your mood disorder, your risk that the child has a MDD or mood disorder is 10 to 25%. However, if both parents have mood disorder, it would be times two. So you have 20 to 50% risk for the child. And there is even greater risk if the affected family member is first degree relatives compared if uh, it is more distance. Also, your twin studies would show also um, genetic, uh, genetic factors are related to uh, mood disorder. So it was found out that uh, if you have monozygotic twins, the risk of both of them getting mood disorder is at least 70 to 90% compared it to your uh, same-sex dizygotic twins which is only 16 to 35% concordance rate. Uh, is that all in that slide, Kate? Yes, but no. I'm going to look at time, 8.38. Na. Uh, why is that important for us to know? For the family family history po, do, of uh, MDD. Yeah, but why? When uh, In terms of management. Um, uh, um, this uh, it is important to know the the history, especially the mood history of the family dog, so that you would have the idea. Kung the 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 parent was is a they are is a the is a the depressed parent, then minigyan ng ganitong gamot, then effective yung certain gamot. So most likely your patient, yung anak ng na may depression, then would most likely respond to this, respond to the same antidepressant. Okay, so what you're talking about is pharmacogenetics. No? Na ganito, ganyan. But, uh, okay, sige, I will consider that. Ano pa? If I come to you na mildly depressed lang, and then I have both of my parents has mood disorder, pero mild lang yung depression ko. What will you do? Ano yung decision making mo in terms of management? Mag psychotherapy ka lang? Psychotherapy plus pharmacotherapy? Pharmacotherapy. Mag start ka na ba ng antidepressant? Even if parang social ano lang yung issue lang ng ano, ng normally 
experienced by people across uh, a person's lifespan, like loss of a loved person, that is normally being experienced across the person's lifespan. So grieving lang ako, ganyan ganyan, or or loss of a job, no? So will I be given antidepressant right away? So that will, I know, that will depend on the risk for developing MDD. That's why it's important to ask uh, if there are family members so that you can assess the risk of developing MDD considering the stressor. Because if I am, I have no family history and then comparing to a person with a family history, a high family history of depression, given the same stressor, I will, I will not have, I will not progress to MDD, but the other person will because of genetic vulnerability. So, sana naklaro niya sa, nasa inyo how to use the information about genetics in your, ano, in your decision making on how to manage your patient. Kasi tapos dagdagan nyo ng tingnan nyo ang upbringing. Na? Kasi if there is high genetic risk to develop MDD, pero the patient was able to, ano ba, uh, because of the upbringing, maganda ang coping styles niya, then probably baka tingnan mo muna, mag-psychotherapy ka lang muna. Pero kung hindi, then yan na rin yan siya. So actually, it's a parang holistic way of looking at the patient. Ha? Pagdating sa depression, sige. Uh, and other, ano, itong genetic factor across all psychiatric disorders man ito. Okay. Continue. Okay. So last topic, we have our psychosocial factors. So, um, as mentioned earlier, stressful life events uh, often precede first, then your episodes of mood disorders. So this is uh, that's why it is important that uh, we ask you know, what is the trigger for the patients having uh, frequent episodes of depression. So usually, uh, as mentioned earlier, your stress, which accompanies your stressful life events, results in your long-lasting changes in uh, the brain biology, including the HPA axis. So uh, due to this, due to the long-lasting effects of uh, chronic stress, uh, some patients have a higher risk of undergoing subsequent episodes of your mood disorder, even without an external stress. So, so more on uh, internal ang trigger na niya So uh, the most associated life event in depression is, again, losing a parent before 11 years old, while their environmental stressor most associated with depression is your loss of spouse. And also, it was found out that unemployed persons have uh, thrice more likely to develop um, MDD. All right. Uh, and, uh, ano, uh, ito yung last slide ko. No? <laughs> ah, sige, sige. Tapusin mo na lang. And ah, then let's go back to the ano ba? previous slides. Uh, so lastly, um, also I ex as I mentioned earlier, we have your non-genetic factors, which explains your 60 to 70 percent of the variance of susceptibility to MDD. So these are your individual specific environmental effects. So uh, these effects include your adverse effects in childhood and your ongoing or recent stress due to uh, interpersonal adversi uh, adversities, which includes childhood sexual abuse. Uh, trauma, low social support, marital problems, and divorce. So as I mentioned earlier, also we have gender-specific stress uh, sensitivity. So while men and women are generally equally sensitive to your depressogenic effects or stressful life events, um, the responses vary depending on which type of stressor. So um, for men, usually um, they are more sensitive to divorce, separation, and work difficulties. While for women, they are more sensitive to events that uh, concerns their proximal social network. So this includes uh, get difficulty getting along or having a fight with a friend or another person. 
a family member having serious illness or uh, even death. So, mas sensitive ang women sa mga uh, in, um, So, that was uh, my last slide for that. Okay, thank you, Kate. Let's go mm -hmm. back to your previous slide. Yes. Actually, ang nakalimutan ko pala itanong sa iyo, yun sa genetic factors, is uh, what is the chromosome implicated for depression? So, ah, wag po na ibalik yan kasi I haven't I, okay. so go go back to the ano, kasi madali ko lang makalimutan ang mga tanong ko kung hindi ko matanong ka agad okay so what's the uh, chromosome for uh, sa unipolar depression doc, sa pagkaalala ko is sa chromosome 2 ba doc you have your CREB1 CREB1 chromosome ang chromosome ano, okay, tingnan nyo ha Kasi we have such a thing as genetic engineering na ngayon. And then we have also, kailan kami nag-start ng pharmacogenetics sa clinical trials? Siguro in 2008, 2009. So, but then ang nangyayari sa SPMC, hindi kami pinayaga na maggawa ng pharmacogenetics. So, other sites across other countries, they, they did that pharmacogenetics. And that is to identify which chromosome will be uh, responsive to this specific medication that we are uh, doing clinical trial on. So, siguro pagdating ng sa inyong time na you, are, you become practicing, baka mangyayari na yon yung, yung pharmacogenetics. So, it, it would be wise now to know ano yung mga chromosomes involved pagdating sa depression, pagdating sa ano. So, uh, and then, uh, so, so psychosocial factors, losing a parent. Uh, ano yung definition mo ng losing a parent? Namatay? Can either death or separation do, from uh, of the child to the parent. Give me an example of a separation. For example, do, um, one patient will um, due to work, uh, to work, doc will go to another place, to parang ano. And so, mabilin ang child sa house, mag ano. FW, yep. <laughs> Is that it? Yan yung, ma yung, yan yung example ko, doc. How <laughs> uh, about you, Adam and Meko? Uh, Michael. Okay, so one, uh, separation from one or both parents through yung divorce or annulment, tapos ipagkait ng isang parent na makita or makahalubilo ng bata yung isang parent. Okay, uh, giving up for adoption yung child. Tapos, oh, ito, kung in ako, when I was still a baby. And then, and pagdating ko ng 12 or 15 years old, saka ako sinabihan na adopted ako, bakit ako nagka-depress? Dahil ba dito? Or ibang, ibang ano yun siya, psychodynamic explanation? Yuhu. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, oo, oh, oh. ito yung ano kasi ikakaiba ang ang depression ng children when they find out that they are adopted. That's why it's it's advisable that as early as makaintindi yung bata, masabihan na siya that the bata is adopted. So that hindi na siya ma surprise. Na? Two years old, one, I, ano na, transparent na na adapted. And that's because of the feelings of 
rejection na maano so that they they become depressed but this is not associated with losing a parent no kasi there's no loss of parent yung ano yung parental figures nila are the adoptive parents it has something to do with the feeling of being rejected yung tinapon ka diba ewan ko sa inyo dati sa time namin kuan kanang kung mag-away ang magkakapatid yan ang pang kuan talaga na Uy, napulot ka lang sa basurahan or whatever na ano adapted ka hindi ka kapatid namin ganyan ganyan so uh, so uh, why am i raising this point is because sometimes pag losing a parent has many ano ba connotations so for this psychosocial factor it has something to do with not being with the parent na through death through work through separation basta hindi na niya ma wala na siyang communication with the with the parent kunyari OFW ako tapos may anak ako na mga bata pa and i go i, I go to like kunyari mag ano man ang domestic helper and then i go to dubai pero i constantly get in touch with my child through video chat through ganyan ganyan uh, mga ano yan ano yan ano yan FaceTime or mga WhatsApp mga ganyan mga mga app so uh, is that losing a parent uh, hindi no since there is communication between the parent and the child even though physically they are separated pero parang emotionally or um, in relationship wise they are still connected so my support parin from the uh, parent to the child uh, is there a difference between virtual presence of a parent and physical presence of a parent um hello doc echo try lang doc ha <laughs> I think there is a difference na din do, especially if the if sa during the the first year of life, since parang yung haplos ng ina is parang important sa wata. That's why that's why if there are OFW parents, especially mga ang may makita ko yung mga nurses. Uh, if both are nurses, one will opt to stay at home until the the child gets older, na? and the other one works abroad. And then, kung medyo matanda na yung ano, saka na mag work abroad yung isa. Or there are some na ganyan ganyan. Ang isa mag work, tapos balik ganyan ganyan. But the thing is, if a uh, single parent, na single parent. Ang usual advice Jan is okay you get in touch always with your I know with your child but you have to have you have to assign a uh, parang maternal figure na kasama niya okay that's why it can be a lola but lolas well ang problema sa lolas at saka grandparents is they tend to spoil the grandchild no may yaya but ang problema sa yaya is dapat i-monitor kung tama ba ang kanyang ano upbringing may tita ang experience ko sa tita ah, hindi ito sa book ha but sa experience ko is they get to be more strict especially kung laon gani ah laon tama ba yan or sa bigas yan <laughs> tama do tama do <laughs> okay so yan siya they, they tend to be more strict no so strict ba or uh, minsan pinapa ano ba yung mga foster parenting mga kinukuha sila ng mga kapatid na may family na no but they have to be ano ba accepted as part of the family hindi kay nakatira ka lang diyan so so there are so many things na ganyan so so that if you encounter patients or with parents na ganyan ito yung dapat maintindihan nila na na uh, ang triggering ng depression is like so so ano yung change of environment that you want the patient to have na? 
So environmental stressors, loss of a spouse, okay. Ito, you have to, meron tayong DSM 40R before. So DSM 40R, meron tayong GAF. No? General Assessment of Functionality. So, uh, tapos, meron din doon nakalagay yung, level, yung nakalista according to severity of stressors. Huh? Sa DSM-5, nawala yun siya. Huh? Kasi yung before DSM-4, axis 1, axis 2, axis 3, axis 4. Pero I think it would be best for you to still do that sa sarili nyo lang. Huh? Na, alam nyo pa ba kung ano yung mga axis, multi-axial diagnosis? Kasi sa DSM-5, nawala yun for whatever reason. Yung axis 1 is the diagnosis talaga. Axis 2 is the medical diagnosis kung may mga medical illness. Axis 3 is yung mga character traits, mga personalities, mga ganyan. Axis 4 is the psychosocial stressor. Axis 5 is the uh, GAF. So that kung tingnan mo siya, I think... Uh, I do that sa aking recording system sa clinic. Para pagtingin ko, nakita ko na before ang patient, pagtingin ko, ma-remind ka agad ako na, ah, ito pala sila. Diagnosis, other medical diagnosis, psychosocial stressor, personality traits, at saka levels of functioning. Para pag next, i-ano, nag-improve ba ang level of so ganyan-ganyan. But uh, I hope you will still do that even if it's not required in DSM-5. Para maklaro sa inyo, ano ba talaga. So, uh, if you notice, yung lecture mo, at saka yung mga lectures sa sunod, pinafollow yung multi axial diagnosis. So, uh, unemployment, okay, how will you deal with unemployment if you are already practicing psychiatrist? Pagkatapos, ang reklamo niya, wala na siyang pera, na-depress siya kasi wala siyang pera kasi unemployed. O, oh, paano mo... Paano mo siya singilin? <laughs> Will your professional fee add more to the depression yes, of your yes. patient? <laughs> okay, so that is a personal challenge. Kahit na ako, it's, it's always a personal challenge if I encounter patients that are unemployed. Okay lang sana kung ano, kung merong sponsor. No? Pero... Kung sabihan ka na nangutang siya para lang magpa-check up. No? And you know, long term ang treatment ng MDD. No? It's, it's your personal decision na, no? na, na to, well, bahala ka na sa discarte mo about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, okay. Ito na ba last slide mo? Yes, no. Ah, okay, this is self-explanatory. This is self-explanatory. Actually, uh, there are many more stressors. No? Currently, you have bullying, which is the parang trend ngayon, uh, source of stress as a child. No? Being bullied. Tapos, um, but uh, by and large, it depends now. When you see a patient na may ganyang mga past history, you have to assess yung impact niya. The, the, the impact of the event on the patient's psyche. Kasi malay mo, hindi pala siya, ano, hindi pala yan yung kanyang stressor kay like okay lang pala sa kanya. Like for example, low social support. Tapos pag, pag tingin mo sa kanya, maganda ang coping mechanism niya kay nag, nag seek siya ng employment tapos was even able to send support to the family. So yun, tal, yun tuloy ang naging motivation niya na to, to excel in life, yung mga ganyan ba. So uh, while it can be a psychosocial stressor, but it does not contribute to the depression of the patient. So, tingnan nyo na lang kung ano, marital problems, divorce, eh kung siya ang nag-initiate ng divorce. Tapos, hi, salamat, naka-divorce na ko kay it's ma may chance na ako na may taglain. 
<laughs> yung mga ganyan gani so uh, what what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, don't assume na if they have this ito yung stressor nila na i-ano talaga i-explore talaga and hanapin ano yung totoong stressor na so there are there are many stressors talaga na so psychosocial ha huh? psychosocial stressors uh, anything else i think uh, i think ang hindi na mention dito when it comes to philippine culture is yung yung i think oh bullying pero hindi ano naman yan but yung yung ganing tukso-tuksohin even the parents magtukso-tukso na kay, lami kayo cute daw tingnan kung nagaiyak ang bata o mga ganyan. Maano niyo yan? Yung paiyakin gani ang bata kasi cute. Tapos it's the parents mismo or relatives ang gumagawa yung tukso-tukso lang. So uh, you you look at that it, it has something to do with a, a bringing pero Filipino culture, no? Filipino culture. Yung trauma like uh, I think nakikita ko pa yan sa mall hanggang ngayon na ang bata lipay kaayo si gig explore tapos taguan Ayos. tapos paglingon hala nasa ana tapos iyak iyak may bata tapos pag makita ko yung mga adults sige katawa okay don't you think that's a traumatic experience yes. <laughs> although katawan lang but yung impact noon sa bata na uh, what else? Wala na siguro. Wala na siguro. Marami ako maisip, no? Pero it has something to do with uh, problems of yung developmental. Like for example, yung normally mag-explore ang bata, di ba? Sa oral stage, i-ano niya sa bibig. Na? Ganyan. Pero ang ginawa ng ibang parents to, to ano, parang hindi na magawa uli nung bata is lagyan ng sili. Tama, meko, na-experience mo ba yun? Para pag ganyan ang bata, matagam siya, dili na siya mag-ano, hindi na siya mag-hawak-hawak, tapos maglagay sa mouth niya. But if you look at the developmental stage of of that bata at that point in time, yung, yung baby explores the environment and learns from the environment through the mouth. Huh? So kung i-discourage mo yan, gina stop mo ang ano ang learning yung intellectual development ng bata at the same time you you also add ano trauma and stress baka ayaw na niya tuloy mag-explore matakot na siya mag-explore kaya baka kung ano yung consequence noon so they don't like that so actually uh, maraming maraming ano maraming explore but when you see patients, don't forget to think of the cultural nuances ng Pilipino. Na? Na, la ka, may aswang dyan, bantay ka, mga kainin ka, yung mga ganyan. That's why sometimes, kahit ngayon, may makita ako mga parents na, ala, sige, mag-ano ka, at itong tikag doktor, ka-injeksyonan ka. O, de, sana, dyan ang galing yung fear of going to the doctor. <laughs> So, ganyan. So, yeah. Basta don't forget to look at the Filipino culture, ha? Yes, and uh, one last thing. If the patient has been experiencing yung chronic depression without stressor, hindi ka maintindihan bakit na depressed lang siya as a child, andyan na, mas feel na niya, bak, pero okay lang, kala niya, yun yung normal, hanggang sa adult na siya, then look at the genetics. Huh? Look at the genetics and then look at the upbringing. How the patient was molded to see oneself. Huh? Yan siya, ha? Huh? Okay, so I'll see. Kailan ang next? Ano natin? Uh, first two weeks tayo, Doc. So my next week pa yata. Uh, uh, so next week, okay. So, okay, okay. Any questions so far? Lana? Okay, so... Uh -huh. Have a nice weekend, all of you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Do female ward? Hello? Female ward. 
Okay. Okay, ako po, Doc. Ang... Ah, ikaw? Kumusta na ang patients natin? Si ano lang, Doc, yung variantos na yung medyo bantayan natin, Doc. Yung mga nag, 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 nagpiting edema, ng piting edema. Ah, si variantos. Siya ba yung may bas- by basal pneumonia? Opa, Doc. Ah, okay. Siya yung ginaplanuhan na mag-shift ng antibiotic? Yes, Doc. Yung ceftriaxone po. Ah, oh, ceftriaxone. Ang worry ko lang kasi doon, alam mo naman ang SPMC. Uh, Opa. Meron, wala. Meron, wala. So, we have to make sure na makomplete talaga niya. Otherwise, maglala siya. Tapos kung hindi niya makomplete, magkaproblema na naman tayo. Dapat mas higher generation na yung antibiotic. Kaya natikman na niya yung ceftriaxone. Diba? Yun yung worry ko. Kaya nag-start muna ng medyo ano, broad spectrum man din ang Coamox. No? Ah, pa, da. Tapos yung AZ. Ah, Di ba dalawa yun siya? Apo, ah, Doc, yung azithromycin para ah, sa atypical, atypical, oh, ano, bakit? Oo. Oh, oh. 